This video is part of a series of SSIS tutorial videos created by CozyRock. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to configure a package that copies the data from a CSV file to a SQL Server table. Here's the file that I'm going to read the data from. It's a CSV file and there's five columns there, status, date, description, debit, and credit. And each of the columns is separated by a comma. There's 13 rows there. And now we'll go over to Visual Studio. And the first thing I'm going to do is set up my connection managers. So I right mouse click down here in the connection manager area, and I'll set up a new flat file connection for the CSV file. And we'll change that to um, have a different name. I'll call it uh, CSV file input. And then we'll browse to go find the file that I just showed you. And we're in that folder already, but you can't see the file because I need to change this to look for CSV files instead of text files. So there's our file. I'll just double click on it. And then we can take a quick look at the columns and there you can see all the data again. And we click OK to close that. Now I'll set up the OLEDB connection manager. And we need to choose the one I already set up for new tutorials in the past. And we click OK. And I'm going to change the name on this to um, Let's see, call it table for CSV file data. Now I'm going to double click on it to open it again. And uh, there you can see the server name. And then our authentication method will be Windows authentication. And we're going to connect to the new tutorials database. And I'll just test the connection. And it looks good. So I click OK. And now we'll drag the data flow task onto the canvas. And I'll change the name on this to copy data from CSV file to SQL table. And then I can go to the data flow canvas by either double clicking on the data flow task or just selecting it and then clicking up here on data flow. And now we'll go find the flat file source. And I double clicked on it, it added it to the canvas. And I'll change the name on that to load data from CSV file. And then I double click on it to open up the editor. And there it's already chosen the connection manager that I already set up. If I hadn't set that up in advance, I could create the connection manager by just clicking on new here and then configuring the connection manager. So we can just preview the data and there's the same data. And we can take a look at the columns, but that's not necessary. And then I click OK. Stay tuned to see how I complete the configuration of this package and execute it. Are you tired of updating packages because of changing metadata? How many hours have you spent accommodating new source and destination columns? How many nearly identical packages do you have to maintain? Especially when you need to update hundreds of them. Well, you should check out Cozy Rock's Dataflow Task Plus component. Dataflow Task Plus provides the ability to acquire the metadata and map the columns at runtime. You can even use transformations on the data. Just add the changes at the source and destination, execute, and Dataflow Task Plus will handle the process of extracting, transforming, and loading the desired columns from the source to the destination without a need to change the existing package. It works with any standard SSIS Dataflow components transformations, and application adapters. No more manual package updates. Design your SSIS data flows with Dataflow Task Plus and save hundreds of hours. 
a vision of completely metadata-driven processing is now possible. Download CozyRock's Dataflow Task Plus from CozyRock.com. It's free for testing and development within Visual Studio. And now we'll go configure the OLEDB destination. And I'll drag that onto the canvas and connect the blue arrow from the source to the destination. And I'm going to give this a short name right now. Uh, CSV data. And I'll tell you why in a minute. I'm going to actually change the name after I finish the configuration of the destination component. So here it has already selected the connection manager for OLEDB that I set up previously. And again, I could have just waited and clicked on new and configured the connection manager from here. I'll leave the data access mode set to the default, which is table or view fast load. And then I need to, um, if I already had a table that already existed, I would just click on this little arrow and it would offer me the tables that already exist in that database. But I'm going to click on new instead and it generates the script to create a table that has the columns that match the source. So it has the right data type set up and everything. And of course the names are exactly the same as the column names in the source. So I'll just click OK and it just created that table for me. And that's why I didn't want to put a long name on the destination component because that's what it uses for the name of the table. So it just named it CSV data and we can click on view existing. And of course there's nothing there yet. And now I'll click on mappings and that actually causes it to do the mapping for us. And because all the column names are exactly the same, it knows how to map them. So we'll finish configuring that. I'm going to actually change this to the name I wanted to use to name the uh, component, which is write data to SQL table called CSV data. Uh, so we're done configuring it. I'll save the package or the project. So now we'll execute the package. I right mouse click on the package name and I click on execute package. And it was successful. You can see it copied 13 rows, which is the number of rows we had in the CSV file. And now we'll go to Management Studio. And I'll select all the records from that table, CSV data. And there you can see we have all 13 rows and five columns. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to follow us on social media, here's how you can do that.